This learning object is a production of Abu Dhabi Men's College, Center of Excellence for ICT and Learning Technology. Today I'll talk about classes and objects in programming. As you can see, the title reflects what we're going to talk about, writing classes and objects in object-oriented programming language. So the objectives that we want to cover in this lesson are how can we define classes and objects? How can we define methods and instance variables? How can we declare a class and use it? How can we declare instance variables to define class attributes? How can we create an object? And how can we call a method of an object? Make sure that you understand every piece of these objectives at the end of the lesson. Now, in real life, we deal with many objects. We deal with humans, we deal with sometimes animals, we deal with chairs, and so on. Now, all objects, they have attributes or properties and behavior. For example, if you talk about a tiger, a tiger has properties or attributes and a behavior. One of the, or some of the properties of a tiger might be weight, height, speed. And some of the behavior, some of the behavior of a tiger might be the ability to eat, attack, or run. Now, as another example, if we talk about humans, we have object one of humans called Ahmed. His weight is 80 kilograms, let's say. And his height is 176 centimeters, let's say. Now, Ahmed can eat, talk, sleep. A second object called Saeed has a weight of 70, has a height of 165. Again, he can eat, talk, sleep. A third object called Saleh has a weight of 87, height 180, and he can eat, talk, sleep. Now, you can observe that all of them, they have the same behavior, and they have almost the same attributes, except that they have different values for the attributes. So, the attribute weight is 80 in Ahmed, and it is 70 in Saeed. So the values of the attributes change from object to object. But commonly, they have the same attributes. Now, this gives us the chance to define the class that sh makes bos the, the possibility of sharing uh, a model or template within objects. So class human represents the model for us. Class human represents properties of humans, such as weight, height, color, and the behavior such as eat, talk, and sleep. Now, can we formally define classes then? Yes. A class is a model, template, or a blueprint from which objects are created or instantiated. In terms of programming, specifically in the Java language, you can write something like this. You can write public, class, and then class name. Class name is the name you give it to the class, such as human, animal, car, and then you start with a curly brace, opening curly brace, and closing curly brace. Whatever you write in between, between the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace, is called class definition. Inside the class definition, you write variables and methods. Variables represent attributes of the class. Methods represent the behavior of the class. Now, the word public means that this class is a public class, accessible to others. It's not a private class. The keyword class is a mandatory here because it is the keyword that you use to define the class itself. So again, public, space, 
class, space, and then the class name. Little bit more detail. So public represents the class accessibility level. And the class is just a keyword. Class name, the one that you give it to the class. Again, the variables represent the attributes or behavior of the class. Methods represent the behavior of the class. Uh, detailing the variables and methods, you can write the variables in the following way. You give an access level for the variable, a data type, and the variable name. For example, if you are talking about the weight of humans, weight is the variable name. Data type, now, is it integer? Is it floating number? Is it decimal number? And so on. So data type represents what kind of data you are dealing with. Access level, is it public? Is it private? Is it default? Is it protected? I'll be talking about these details in the second lesson, inshallah. The methods, when you write the methods that represent the behavior of the class, you specify the access level, data type, and method name, and some list of parameters within the method. Again, the method observed starts with a curly brace, opening curly brace, and ends with a closing curly brace. Whatever you write within these two curly braces, again, is called method definition. Access level, again, is it public? private, default, or protected. Data type, what does this method return? Does it return a string? Does it return an integer? Does it return an object? And so on. Method name is the name you give it to the method. Parameters, what does this method receive? Details, as we go further in the, uh, the subject, we'll get more information. Now, if you go back a little bit, observe now the class name. Can I give a name of my choice, there is a, a lot of freedom for you to give the names of your classes, but there are small requirements from your side. Now, a class name must begin with an alphabet. So you can't start a class name with a number. You can't start a class name with an underscore, and so on. A class name can contain only letters, digits, underscore, or dollar sign. Dollar sign is discouraged, so you can't use, sorry, you, it's not recommended that you use a dollar sign within the, the name of the class. Now, again, this rule says that you are, have the ability to give or to use letters and digits, underscore, and dollar sign. So we don't expect you to have square brackets, curly braces, and so on within the class name. That's not allowed. A class name cannot be a Java reserved keyword, such as public or void. So you can't say public, class, public, because a public as a keyword cannot be given to the class as a name. One more convention. This is not a requirement, but it is recommended from Sun Microsystems, the creators of the language of Java. So every word of a class should start with a capital letter. For example, coin. Now coin represents a class name. Observe that we started it with a capital C. Decimal format, as a second example, is a name of a class. Observe now, this name consists of two words. Decimal, the word decimal, and the word format. Now, decimal, we have started with capital D. Format, we have started with capital F. This is a recommendation, and it's a very good recommendation that will keep you and other programmers uh, clear about naming of classes.